Well, from humble origins outside of Cleveland, Ohio, my next guest, look, he's done it all in racing and also in the business world. We're talking about Roger Penske, who joins me inside the wind tunnel. Roger, in a little bit more than 50 years, you've been there, done that. Not only have the T-shirt and the souvenir bumper sticker, but you've redefined whether it's the business side of things or the motorsports side of things. In your wildest dreams, when you started buying used sports cars and then rebuilding them and reselling them, did you ever think it was going to end up like this? Well, I guess, Jack, you got to go back to probably 1951, you know, when my dad took me to Indy when I was a young boy, 14 years old, and I got hooked on, I guess, auto racing. But uh, cars were certainly, you know, in my future because I, I watched them, I looked at them, my dad took me to the races. But on the other hand, when I was growing up, uh, he taught me one thing, if you wanted something, he said, you got to work for it. And I remember I wanted to get a bicycle. So I had to go out and get so <laughs> many new customers for the Cleveland News and got a new bike. And he always said, look, you, you raise half the money and I'll be your banker for the other half. And I think that got me started in a way that I had to produce for myself. On the other hand, I had the support of my father which and mother, which obviously is important to all of us as we grow up uh, through time. But, you know, as I think about it and the journey, you know, really is uh, loving cars, been doing a little racing myself. Really back, as you know, back in 65, I wanted to become a Chevrolet dealer. And I was racing at that point. And uh, General Motors said, look, if you're going to be a race driver, we're not going to prove you to be a Chevy dealer. And that's the same thing they did with Jim Rand. If you remember, he was a That's right. 500 runner with a Chevrolet dealership uh, down in uh, in Florida. So I made the change. Uh, a couple of years later, we started the team, and I kept my foot on the gas in the auto business. And and Mark Donahue and I became great friends. I met him up at Lime Rock at one of the races, and I guess the story after that is a lot of success. Unfortunately, we lost him in a tragic accident uh, in Aus Austria in the warm months for Grand Prix, but. Uh, no, it's been amazing, but it's all about the people. I say it every time. I mean, we've been able to really gather around our teams uh, some of the greatest people. And when you think about our organization today, we've got over 65,000 people working in the Penske companies on a worldwide basis. We're on four continents in nine countries. And as you know, we're heavily involved in the automobile business uh, around the world and uh, certainly our truck leasing business uh, has been outstanding. Think about that 50 years ago. Uh, we bought a small little company up in Reading called MM Waterboard. It was the Hertz car and truck licensee. And uh, we had 300 units. And as we crossed the threshold of 2021, we had 357,000 units in our fleet now. So amazing. It used to grow great people, 38,000 people in that business. Uh, we represent many of the top, you know, customers around the country. And, uh, Again, we've gone into our Freightliner business where we're retailing Freightliner trucks. As you know, that's one of the big, we're the, one of the biggest dealer groups. So hey, I've stayed in transportation. I've stayed things that are associated, you know, with cars and trucks. And then of course that common thread through the entire business has really been, has been uh, motorsports and performance. And in both cases, just as an outside observer, Roger, you've always applied the same what I think is very simplistic and yet demanding business adage. And that is to do it the very best way possible and to never forget that it's all about the people and the customers. You've done that both on the automotive side with your dealerships, but now as you've taken ownership of the Indianapolis motor speedway, the NTT IndyCar series, heck everything seems to coalesce against that same Penske attitude, you know, starch white shirt, black pants, and always have a smile on your face and always be looking for the next opportunity. Am I into something? Well, you know, my wife said, I always come home. I got another opportunity. So maybe there's one <laughs> I think the, the opportunity that came uh, uh, really back, uh, as you remember, in, in the end of 19 uh, with Tony George, uh, you know, on in Indianapolis is one that came out of left field, really, you know, having been a track owner with Michigan building, California involved in with, with the NASCAR boys down at Homestead and Rockingham and Cleveland and obviously putting on the you know, Detroit Grand Prix. Uh, that was a very interesting discussion. And, uh, 
you talked about customers. I said, we really have, and I think about it this way every day. We have two customers, you do and I do. It's one that you're talking with, you're selling outside, but it's also the person that works next to you. And sometimes people forget that those people inside are the most important people. I guess it's like the pit crew. You've got the driver and the sponsor and the owner, but the inside people are the ones that make it happen. But Indy has uh, been a special challenge for us, meaning not negative challenge, but one that we've really revered over the last uh, 24 months. And the team, you know, with, with Mark Miles and uh, certainly Doug Bowles and that whole group with Jay Fry at uh, IndyCar and, and, and now with Levi Jones coming in, who is a great sprint car driver to run the Indy Lights program. Uh, and uh, to me, uh, uh, Kevin Sublet runs the, uh, our IMSP, which is our production company. Right. What I've tried to do, instead of having four different entities, we're trying to operate as one. Let's take the strengths, you know, of our marketing, of our digital, of our sponsorship, uh, of our competition, uh, building stars, whether it's Indy Lights or it's in, in, in IndyCar. And you can see it. Uh, uh, our ticket sales are, are way up this year. As we look out, uh, you know, we have 234,000 seats and we probably between what we have already in sold orders and what we're committed to with contracts and also uh, other people that we provide tickets to, we're probably sitting at about 190,000. So that doesn't count any infield. We're going to go forward with concerts this year. We're exciting to talk about some of that talent. I think switching over to IndyCar, you know, our big weekend will be uh, in Iowa this year with uh, High V, and them taking over that weekend will be great. Uh, certainly uh, going into Detroit in 2023, you know, with running in the streets of Detroit has created a lot of interest here. So we're looking for game changers. And the good news is that all of our track owners are all coming back with good news on ticket sales suites. So hopefully, you know, this pandemic has moved past us. Obviously, we're still dealing with Omicron, which hopefully will go away here over the next several weeks or a couple of months. But the Speedway is iconic. It's a place we want to invest. Uh, we've invested another 20 million in just infrastructure and support. Uh, if you're a golfer, we've made that golf course uh, into something special the way it was before. And we use that, obviously, to help our sponsors bring people into the track. Sure. Uh, what Mark Miles uh, and the guys have done, you know, we're vaccinating people there, probably done 120,000 uh, over the last uh, several months. So we're trying to give back, you know, to the community. We had Speedway high school graduation, people driving across the yard of bricks, and then we would hand them their, their diploma. So some great stuff. Look, it's very obvious where the Indianapolis Motor Speedway fits into your, shall I say, inner soul, sharing that your dad took you there for the very first time, like my dad did as well, and you can never get rid of it. But overall, as you survey the landscape, because you are one of the few, Roger, that can look at it from all of the various angles, not just IndyCar, but NASCAR and some of the initiatives that they're taking, like this weekend's, you know, Bush Light Clash at the Coliseum, everything that we're now engaging in uh, as we come out of this COVID-19. Uh, do you like the direction that the industry is taking or are there some, th some things that you would like to see us maybe focus on in 2022 and 2023? Well, I think change is important right now, Jack. The world is changing, you know, people's habits, uh, what they want, communication, obviously, because of the internet, other ways that we can communicate. Uh, so I think we need to change up. And I think NASCAR realizes that they have a long season, what, some 36, 37 yeah. times we've got to go to the track. It's got to be different. And uh, I think that's one of the benefits we have at IndyCar, you know, with a 16 or 17 race schedule. And to me, that gives us uh, shorter races, probably more eye candy, maybe that people can look at for a shorter period of time. But I'm, I'm in favor of it. I think the new gen car has created a lot of interest. And one thing they have done, they've taken cost out, which yeah. is really good. I think the IndyCar series has been pretty consistent on what it costs you to run a car and have a car you can run up front. And in Indy Lights, we've kept the rules the same for the next three or four years so we can develop more drivers and more teams but I think the the racing uh, the things that we're doing in qualifying uh, running a, an IndyCar race and an NASCAR race at the same venue like we will at Indianapolis this year in August these things 
are all, I think, going to be important. From an Indy uh, Speedway perspective, one of the things that we've talked about is having a sports car race there sometime in the next couple of years. So that's probably a big focus on ours. Can we find a schedule point where we could have a long distance race there and build that energy what we see at Daytona, we see at Le Mans, we see at Sebring. So that's something that's high on our list from the standpoint of just Indy, if you look at it by itself. But I think rule changes, we need to be stable. Uh, it costs money every time you change it. I think the current direction and the series that we see I think the rules are providing us a, a level playing field from a cost perspective, which will help us attract new drivers and new teams. In. And so uh, electrification is out there. I think uh, we see some series with that. That obviously will run separate to where we are. I think hybrid is going to be something that we're going to look at uh, as we go forward, uh, not only a NASCAR, but an IndyCar. I think the fuels we use that uh, can be renewable will be very important to us when we think about the atmosphere. So that's got to be key. And then on the top of my list is this, uh, is this uh, race for diversity and change mm. and being able to bring people up that maybe haven't had the opportunity. And one thing I found out when I went to Indy that Rod Reed for the last 10 years has brought in somewhere between 50 and 100 young kids each year into Indianapolis and provided them with go-karts and taught them about wheels, taught them about suspension, some STEM situations that they were not familiar with. And many of these kids only had one parent. The mother would come in. And the thing that hurt me the most was that talking to the mothers and the kids, they thought they couldn't come in the Indianapolis Motor Speedway because they had a guard out there with a badge on. Just think about it. Oh, my gosh. It. Wow. I mean, it really... It really, it, so we've stepped up uh, our diversity and change. Jimmy McMullen is our new diversity officer, great guy, uh, works for us at Indy uh, and is, is taking this role on. And, and we're going to have, as you might have heard, uh, we hope to announce shortly that we'll have a driver uh, of color and a team of color that will be competing in Indy Lights as we go forward uh, in 2022. So we're, st we're sticking with our plan, supporting XG. NXG, which is a go-kart program at the Speedway. And also, you know, we supported Beth Peretta last year, uh, Miles Rowe in the 2000. And this year, we're hoping to move into uh, Indy Lights. Well, and on top of all that, as if you don't have a little bit of time left over, you've become this massive dirt track promoter as well. Now, you may not have gone down to the Chili Bowl, but what you hold there in uh, that, that turn three area with that quarter mile dirt track, it, it has to take something to get Jeff Gordon to get back in the cockpit of a midget. And he shook one down. And uh, it was very evident to me, Roger, that you thoroughly enjoyed your time there. And you pretty much just took your, your folks there at the Speedway and said, we're going to keep this going and we're going to make it an integral part of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Well, guess what? Uh, I went there and I uh, didn't know what to expect. And I yeah. went to dirt races. Uh, out, out at Sportsman's Park in Cleveland. That's where I went and sat in a fourth turn and got dirty. <laughs> I was used to that. But to see these guys run, these kids, and the way they run those midgets was amazing. And to, to see Larson, he bounces off the fourth turn wall and then cuts down and, and gets into the lead. It's just, it was, it was amazing. And I think that we're going to continue to grow that and make it even a better event as we, as we go forward. You know, the one ironic thing that came out of that, I really saw Levi Jones at his best. You're right. Yeah. And yeah. when we were looking for someone to take on Indy Lights, that, his, that, that name came up, that face came up, and he's jumped into the seat as a real asset for, for IndyCar and Indy Lights as we go forward. So we got a, I got a benefit out of that from the standpoint of a new leader. On the other hand, I think there's a great fan base there. And to see these kids on – uh, I just can't wait to see them come back next year. So you can count on a full, full bore event. Neither can we. And Roger will get you the goggles and the solo cup with the yeah. top on it. So you don't get the clay in there. Listen, yeah. it's been a real pleasure. Uh, continued success. We're getting ready to kick off the season on the NASCAR side. We've already getting ready to kick off the season, the end of February in St. Petersburg, Florida. It is time to crank it back up and it's good to have you at the helm of so many key pieces in the moving part that is the world of motorsports. I appreciate it. And thanks for joining me here inside the wind tunnel today. Jack, thank you. It's uh, obviously you're a great friend. We've known each other for a long time and uh, you've been a great promoter of the sport and uh, 
God bless you and your family. And uh, we'll see you down the road. Thank you, Roger. I do appreciate it.